Hey everybody, this is Tim Pulaski with TriMac, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to define a wire style in SolidWorks Electrical. Now when drawing a new wire inside of a project, you may have noticed over here on the left, when you click on Browse to browse for another wire style, the list that you typically get is not very complete, or it may not be the wires that you're after. Uh, or the wires that you use on a daily basis. So to get something that looks more like this, we have to actually add our own wire styles. So I really just want to step you through the process of creating a very comprehensive list like the one we see here. Uh, and talk a little bit about what values inside of your wire properties are important and which ones aren't. Now your wire styles can be located underneath the project tab Configurations drop down, Wire Styles. Inside of here, it's going to take you to another panel that lists out all of the wire styles that are currently in a given project. Now you'll see that I've modified mine from the defaults that are given out of the box. And what I'd like to do is just select one of these and talk about its given properties. So let's select this red control wire here by double clicking on it. So the way that I've set these up is to include a lot more information in the wire style that I want to see on the back end when I run my reports. So I'm just going to go down the list here and talk about some of the properties that you have access to and what they do. So the first property in the list is the name of the wire style. This is a way to differentiate this wire style from the others in the same list. What I commonly like to do is to name this according to its gauge or its, its diameter. Maybe include a manufacturer, uh, but certainly include the color as well. Okay, so at the bare minimum, I usually like to have gauge and color. Down below, you have information related to how this wire is going to be represented on a schematic drawing under general. And under cabling, you have information related to the physical wire itself. Okay, So if we talk about how it's represented on a schematic, the conductor grouping is really just a way of grouping these wires together according to some, some kind of parameter like phase one, phase two, neutral wire protection control. Okay, Most, most wires that aren't going to be used for power or may just um, be miscellaneous in nature, you can keep under control or phase one. Under line color, you have the color of the actual wire on the schematic. So if this is a red wire, it stands to reason that this would be red in color. But you can change that to whatever color you would like using this given palette here or hexadecimal codes. Line type indicates how this is going to be represented on the schematic in terms of whether it's a continuous line or if it's a broken line dashed or has symbols in between it. Okay, And so this can kind of be customized to suit your needs. For most wires, they're just going to be continuous. Line width will actually control how thick the wire is on the page. Equipotential formula and wire formula are going to change the way your wires are actually numbered. Okay, So I talk about this in a different video in a little bit more detail, but these formulas here, based on your numbering scheme, will control the tag that these are actually given. Propagate data is going to determine whether or not this wire is actually going to push, say, its mark to a terminal uh, and push its mark to a terminal label, for example. So you can turn that either on or off. All right, so those are really controls that are specific to the schematic drawing. Under cabling, you have commands that are related to the physical wire itself. So these are a little bit more useful to see on reports. And if you have SolidWorks Electrical 3D, a lot of these properties will be considered. So the first is diameter, which specifically refers to the jacket diameter of the wire. Okay, So this is really only important if you are going to be routing these in 3D, using SolidWorks Electrical 3D. This will determine the diameter of the physical wire route. Under section or gauge, you have the section or the gauge of the wire in question. This is quantified by the next uh, value down here, wire size standard. Okay, so whatever value you enter, you enter into the box above, it's going to be qualified by either the section uh, millimeter squared or uh, gauge, AWD, uh, AW, yeah, excuse me, AWG standard that you see here. 
The wire color is literally the jacket color, okay? So you can select from up to three different colors that you want to apply to this. Uh, similar to the line color, although a little bit more limited, you're just going to have access to flat colors and then you can combine them in different, uh, to different degrees. So if I have you know, a, a white and blue wire, or in this case just a red wire, uh, you can set that up any way you'd like. Uh, bend radius relates to the minimum bend radius of this particular wire. This has specific functions in, again, SOLIDWORKS Electrical 3D. When this is routed, this value here will be taken into account when the software is routing this wire uh, and will flag you if this value is exceeded when you're taking tight bends around corners. Okay. Uh, technical data, you generally don't need to fill this out unless there is a particular wire style that is always going to carry the same voltage or frequency. Usually this information here is better uh, fulfilled using the signal property in the specific application of the wire. The signal will only be available when that wire has been drawn on the page and usually that's going to vary based on application. So I usually leave these two values blank. Under description, you have a more descriptive representation of what this wire is. So personally, I end up usually copying this, um, copying the name of the wire style uh, down to the description and just keeping that the same. But I may want to throw a modifier in here like wire, just so that my bill of materials comes up uh, very, very neat and organized, listing all the wires in the same place, things like that. Now down below under user data, uh, this is where you might want to start getting a little more creative. User data are properties of your own specification, so you can make these whatever you would like. Now what I've done is I've added two user data values here, one for the manufacturer name and one for the manufacturer part number. But you can add your own by simply coming down here to the customize button, selecting user data and saying insert user data. And this will allow you to add a new property, say maybe I have an internal part number. Type that out real quick, maybe capitalize the N. And that will add a new property to this particular wire style. When I come back to the top level, there's that internal part number and I can key that in and help catalog this based on that number. That is now a number that will show up in my reports if I choose to represent it. Uh, and I can also sort and break by that number. Okay, so user data is something that I highly recommend you leverage if none of these properties sort of meet the same needs that you're after. Now this is really all there is to your wire styles and creating those. Once you've created a wire style, if other wire styles are going to match similar properties, you can do a copy and paste between these wire styles by just doing Control C, Control V, or by right clicking and selecting copy, and then right click, uh, I believe in the group over here on the left, and say paste. And it's going to create a new one, it'll usually just add a plus one to the end of that. And then you can go into the properties for that particular wire style, which is our red guy right here. Uh, just double click on it, change the name, and on you are. So typically once you set up one wire style, it becomes a pretty simple matter of just coming in here and changing the color or changing the, uh, the gauge uh, and then copy pasting once again.